This is what it's all about. Fulfillment of an industrial dream and an international drama. Tamam. Tamam. Ereli Demir Vicelik at work today, producing steel for Turkey's greater tomorrow. Ereli Demir Vicelik Fabrikalaru and Copper's Associates, Copper's Company and Blonox Company and Westinghouse Electric International Company. Consider the era. The time, mid 20th century. The place, across the face of Anatolia. From Turkey in Europe to the Bosporus and a thousand miles east to Mount Ararat and Russia and Iran. We are 32 million Turks and for 24 million of us, our life is the land. Our livelihood, the flocks we husband for milk and cheese, meat and wool and tobacco, world renowned. Our orchards envied throughout the Middle East. Our vegetables are unsurpassed. Our life is the land. And the sea, for our waters are rich. In an ancient economy, life and livelihood are one. Our wools, our dyes, our ancient skills come alive in rugs and draperies. We are the traditional backbone of the Turkish economy, the artisans, the fishermen, and the men and women of the soil, the builders and craftsmen. And for all the world's intrusion, the time for some of us could be a thousand years ago and more. For old ways can be good ways, and this is still the way for many of us. But the urge of industry has been a ferment in the Turkish blood since Ataturk roused the nation with the dictum and the challenge. Öğün. Have pride. Güven. Be confident. Çalış. Work. Since Ataturk, we have founded new industries. Cement for concrete and construction. We built great mills too for paper, the lubricant of business. The raw stock of the press, the printed surge of ideas widely spread. And a quarter century ago, we began to produce the first Turkish steel at Karabük. Ties and rails for advancing transport. Elementary steel products, bars to reinforce traditional concrete structures, and basic structural steel for modern construction. Through the years, we have made great and consistent steps forward in industry. But despite the advancing pattern of progress, we were still mid-century, predominantly a nation of farmers, fishermen, craftsmen, most of us still reliant on the land, the ancient arts, the work of the hands. Only one in four of our people engaged in the civil arts, government, the professionals, industry, and the trades.
This imbalance in the nation's economy was a threat and a challenge. In a world of nations surging with industry, a nation of craftsmen and farmers competes under heavy handicap. The bullock cannot match the tractor in the field. Nor the bullock farmer, the tractor farmer, in the marketplace. Turkey's tomorrow called for new growth today. Industrial growth that would underwrite the long-term prosperity of a proud people. This was the challenge. To spur our ancient economy founded in the soil. To accelerate economic growth, Turkey needed the more versatile steels. The flat rolled steels basic to the making of modern consumer products. The times demanded Iraqi. And there were men and mines in Turkey with vision as big as Turkey's need. To turn the vision into reality, Turkey called on a triumvirate of American companies, world leaders in steel technology, to produce the core elements of the plant that would rise at Ereli. Copper's associates joined hands with Turkey's leaders for the task. We called on coppers to coordinate the total project and engineer the plan. To design the overall plant and supply the major units that make iron and steel. Ultimately to assist Erdemir in initial management of the completed plant. We called on Blonox to design and build the mills that roll and shape raw steel to useful form. And we called on Westinghouse to provide the motors, the generators, the complex controls that put electric power to work to make steel. This was the international team, Turk and American ready to go. Copper's associates at work for Ereli. We were economists, engineers, construction men, collaborating at every level of responsibility from the executive office to the field. Hand in hand, we built the groundwork for the massive project. A key factor in the economic plan was the certainty that Turkey's resources would support capacity operation for all the foreseeable future. From the central plateau, ore could come from established mines and new ones being opened. From the black buried treasures beneath Zonguldak, the coal for coke for steel. And limestone from quarries in the hills above Ereli. Deployment of the mines. Established railroads. And sea transport routes and facilities focused the decision to locate the new steel mill at Ereli on the Black Sea. How does the greatest industrial project in the life of a nation come alive? With the tough, bleak work of breaking ground. The soil itself is a challenge here, amenable to the dozer blade on the surface, but underground it demands reinforcement, the massive support of a forest of pilings, these will secure the foundations, stand solid beneath the immense loads for generations to come. We are Turks and Americans, the construction cadres, laying groundwork for the bigger drama to come.
Turkish cement, Turkish talents, and Turkish reinforcing steel ensure the working integrity of the great structures. As the mill buildings rose, nearby hills succumbed to progress, provided rock and fill for the new port jetty inching seaward, a bulwark road and bastion to protect the new harbor facilities. Our seawise colleagues in marine engineering cast the great concrete forms, the tetrapods, Strong as granite and self-interlocking, these would secure the new harbor against Black Sea storms, protect the long pier for ships that will bring in the raw materials for steel, and one day soon sail away with Irelia's finished products. We punched a new road along the old harbor front, a route for the massive equipment pouring in from the States. Six thousand sea miles to the west in the United States. The American members of the Aureli team were pressing the design and manufacture of the thousands of elements needed to make a steel plant work. Turkish purchasing mission joined the Americans in the complex job of obtaining needed equipment and scheduling the movements of men, material, and ships from literally hundreds of factories located in as many American cities and towns. Tens of thousands of parts, vital parts. On most items, it was just seven months, seven months from date of order to delivery at Ereli Karadeniz. As part of the teamwork, half of the 110,000 tons of equipment and material embarked in ships under Turkey's flag, half in bottoms under the Stars and Stripes. Nearly three weeks at sea, and the freighters, 50 voyages from the United States, delivered their cargoes without a break in the basic flow. No critical hitch in the mammoth schedule. Cargo delivered. All routine, but each discharge is a footnote to destiny that started in the States or in Europe, for we called on many continental sources to complete the project on time. As a steel plant grows, it takes on a personality, a quickened pace. You sense it in the faces of the builders. Turks and Americans pushed the project with unspoken enthusiasm in mutual high regard. Rising now toward completion, the intricate coke ovens where Turkish coal will be baked into coke and release the volatile gases that we shall capture and process into tars for highways and wood preservation, into benzol and its derivatives, chemicals for motor fuel, medicines and plastics. Rising to the giant stoves of the blast furnace complex, superheaters of the air that will blast the charge of ore and coke and limestone to produce molten iron the mother stuff of steel.
The winters seemed in league against us, but the tenacious streak in men who build is an odds-on match for the elements. And construction progressed.